tell the audience for those who may not know what a power bottom is. All right, a power bottom is um, someone who can take really big and who's also a little bit of a which is me. <laughs> Probably a little too much of an inflated sense of self. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered, the show that sits down with sex workers and gets to know who they are on a true personal level. My guest today is Michael Boston. He's known for his fantastic ass, which won him the Favorite Butt Award at the 2023 Gay Viennes. And he was also the ex-biz 2022 Gay Performer of the Year. Welcome, everybody. Michael Boston. Yay. <laughs> Yay, drum roll. Ah. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. This coffee is just giving me life right now. Um, so, Michael, you do. <sighs> when did you realize you had such a great ass? When did I realize it? Mm-hmm. Um, when did you appreciate your assets? When I started having sex. Oh, when was that? When I was 19. Okay. Mm-hmm. So tell me about, so you're obviously. We're jumping right in. Yeah, we are jumping right <laughs> in. Tell me about when you lost your virginity at 19. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. <laughs> oh, well, well um, let's see. Um, I was living in Salt Lake City for the first time. I was living alone um, and going to college. Mm-hmm. And my twin brother was living with me too. Is he identical twin brother? Mm-hmm. <gasps> Good times. Good times had by all. Um, and he's also gay too, right? Mm-hmm. We're little hell raisers. Um, and yeah, basically I was horny and I finally wanted to finally have sex. And so I went online and found someone and just hooked up. Yeah. And yeah. was it a guy? Mm-hmm. So when did you like realize that you were gay? Um, God, we are jumping in. Good Sorry. God. I didn't even I love it. No, it's great. All. I think it's funny. Shoved right in there. Oh, yes. How I like it. Um, When did I realize? I guess I always kind of knew, but um, I didn't really have the verbiage until I was a little older. Mm -hmm. But even then, I didn't really call myself gay until, like, I just had to become more comfortable with myself before I could call myself that. Because growing up, gay was never really a positive thing for the most part. Yeah. You grew up Mormon, right? Mm -hmm. So how did that land with your family? Um, Like me being gay? Yeah. They didn't care. Most of my family left the church before I even was like being a whore. Okay. So. Okay. Recreationally at that point. Okay. (laughs) Recreational hornums. So tell me a little bit about your family, like growing up just as much as you're comfortable with. Um, just like my family in general growing up? Yeah. Just like what was your, you know, because I mean, our childhood shaped who we are, right? Yeah. I don't, mm, let me think. It was, (laughs) I'm like. I'm so annoying. It was good. <laughs> it was fine. It was perfect. It was good. <laughs> um, it was good. I would say it was pretty normal and pretty happy for the most part. Um, there's not really a lot that I can think of that was like traumatic or bad or or whatever, honestly. But then again, I don't really dwell on that kind of yeah. stuff either. But it's also like, I mean, when we talk about our childhood, we don't have to dwell on the bad stuff. I mean, no True. one's perfect, right? Like True. when people ask me about yeah. my childhood, because I grew up, I was raised by pornographers. Yours had to be so interesting. But it wasn't like <laughs> but it wasn't. really, you know? Exactly. Like I had a very normal childhood and like I had a good one and I loved my parents and we were close. I rode my bike, I fucking climbed trees. Yeah. I fucking, you know, I did all the regular kid stuff. And yeah. I would say I'm, Oh my God, not to like, I mean, I'm in my 20s, so it's not like, you know, that crazy, I guess. But like, you know how some people are like, um, <laughs> they'll like shit on other people's childhoods. Like, oh, I did this and yours is not like, you know, half as good as mine. But like mm-hmm. me thinking like, could you imagine like growing up and having a screen in your face since like infancy? <sighs> yeah. No, like, I'm cause... so grateful for that. Yeah. That I didn't have that. Like, I remember like when I was a kid and I would like feel sick if I didn't go outside. Yeah. Like... For at least a little bit. Yeah. So, like, I couldn't imagine, like, I don't know. At least that's how it appears. I don't have any kids. But it appears, like, most kids are, like, very much, you know, yeah, online and, like, doing screen stuff rather than, like, actually, like, going out and, like, doing 
doing yeah. kid shit. Yeah. I mean, I will say, you know, I have a three year old and we're not really at a point where like she has any control over how much screen time she has, right. obviously. Um, but we definitely regulate it. Um, mm -hmm. I won't lie. I let her watch a little bit of something while I try to do her hair in the morning, just because oh, yeah. otherwise I can't get her to like stand there. S sit um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but I got, I got to train her out of that. And then, um, but otherwise we don't let her watch any TV or anything at all during the week at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Friday nights, movie night and boy, she looks forward to that. Aww. And then we might watch something Saturday night maybe Sunday night, depending on what we do. But otherwise, like, it is not. Yeah. And, you know, we take her out to dinner and, like, we don't let her watch TV. We don't let her, we don't let her watch an iPad. We don't yeah. let her watch a phone. Yeah. You see a lot of that now, like, yeah. parents going out to dinner. Which at the same time, too, like, I, like, I mean, not that I get it, but, like, I can see, you know, I, I would assume parenting would be hard. So, like, it is anything to, like, have a moment to, like, breathe. Yes. You're going to fucking take it. So I understand yes. why, like, when you have an iPad and it's pretty, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I'm not here to shit on anyone. Yeah. Oh, I am. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Which is fine because you are a parent and I'm not. So like, I'm not trying to like be like, fuck you guys. You, need, you guys need to do it like this. Like, cause yeah. Yeah. I, no, I it's, imagine. it's definitely <laughs> difficult. And like, you know, our kids, I mean, I wouldn't say she's easy, but she's not like super difficult. Like yeah. there's a lot of kids that are super difficult, but I also, I come like prepared with a backpack full of coloring books oh, and crayons cute. and like oh my God. all that stuff because she, you know, to yeah. ask a child, a three-year-old to sit at a table quietly yeah. for an hour, like yeah. that's not a reasonable expectation. No. <laughs> so you have to like give them something, but like yeah. for us, screens are not the oh. answer. Anyways, I don't know why we dived into parenting um, so I, early. We are. <laughs> So it's the parenting podcast now. I know, right? <laughs> um, so you have a twin brother. Yeah. Are you guys still close? Yes. I feel like oh, I don't know. I growing up, I feel like we were closer, and I feel like now as adults, we've actually been we've been actively trying to work towards being closer again because I feel when we were nineteen and twenty, living together in Salt Lake City, and both exploring ourselves. Um, we kind of like drifted a lot mm -hmm. because when you're going, th when you're trying to like, I don't know, like, um, work through like who you are in that respect. And also when you've grown up in such like a secular kind of religious environment, it can be hard to, I don't know, it's just hard. It's yeah. like, there's a lot of processing you have to do. So like to also be someone's friend that you've been basically competing with all your life too, at the same time, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. So I feel like recently, especially, um, the past couple of years, um, we've had like talks I'm like, all right, we need to like actually actively try not to be annoying to each other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like there's no point of ever like either of us ever visiting. No, but do you guys have <laughs> so I'm so fascinated by the idea of identical twins. And, you know, there's been like tons of studies on right. like them being incredibly close and like almost like psychically connected. Mm -hmm. Do you have that experience? Um, I don't. I wouldn't even like call it psychically connected. It's just like you just know each other so well that you mm -hmm. can just kind of guess. Yeah. Like I know how my brother is, so I know I know how he'll respond to things. That's right. not being psychic. You just know that you grew up with that person since birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let's call it you just know them super well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've had our moments, I guess, maybe. But I don't know. We just were always very competitive growing up. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like our parents' fault, just how we are. Yeah. We're just both very competitive people who like yeah. to do things well. Would you say like your personalities are pretty much exactly the same or is he a little different than you in some ways? I would say that we are, we can be very similar, but we are also very, very different. Mm. Okay. So like, for instance, he is one of those people who's really good at remembering um, who's wronged him. Ah, and I am not. Grudges. Yeah, oh, he is the queen <laughs> of grudge holding. He is amazing at it. He'll have the time, the date, just full time stamp. Um, the weather, um, of like the day that you did something that he did not like. Uh huh. Um, but like for me, I forget. <laughs> That's I good I will always for I forget. Like if it's really bad, I'll probably like remember you did something, but I don't remember it, what it is. Really? <laughs> like, I just don't care. I mean, like I'll care in the moment, but like after a while, I'm like, why would I let that weigh me down? I think that's a really good quality to have, and a lot of people aren't like that. They it like bugs carry the fuck those... out of him that I'm like that. Really? <laughs> no, so that's angry. that's so like because holding resent onto resentments is mm -hmm. it's a prison for you, not mm -hmm. for the person. Like the person they don't people, care. They generally don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Like resentments <laughs> definitely like they poison you. Yeah. So I think that's a great quality. I already quality. put enough poison in my body as it is. So like, 
<laughs> Let's like mitigate as much as we can. <laughs> so did you either one of you like realize your sexual orientation before the other one or was it like a mutual thing? Like, do you guys ever I'm like sh- have a discussion about it or no. was it just kind of like you just knew and it like was became a thing like. I think we both knew individually and probably also at the same time, but we just didn't talk about it. Hmm. But especially like while we were, when we were like younger, but also, um, did either one of you ever try to date women or were you just like, well, in junior high school, we would have girlfriends, but it was more or less just to keep people off our backs. Mm, So like beards, right? Basically. Yeah. (laughs) But I kissed them and shit. Sure. (laughs) But you know, like playing house and then is your is your twin in like the entertainment industry in any form is he like totally different he um i tried to drag him into porn with me but um he was like nah. i'm like all right fine so you two goes, would kill it uh, i know i i mean but it's also like anyway it's also awkward because i have shot yeah. siblings in a scene yeah and like because of compliance they like can't touch each other which is fine i wouldn't want to touch him anyway yeah but yeah it's like yeah yeah i can see anyway um he does um modeling and stuff like that and he has another job but he does i don't know what else he does but um Mm -hmm. yeah we both grew up dancing okay so we were very competitive with each other with that and then um he moved to new york and yeah and i moved around myself so you're a trained dancer. So tell us a little bit about your dancing career. Like how many years did you dance for? I danced from 12 years old to 21. And yeah. what kind of dancing were you talking about? Talking like hip hop, jazz, hip hop. Uh, um, I was mostly um, I was mostly a competitive ballroom dancer. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like what kind of like? I was primarily I loved uh, Latin ballroom. <gasps> yeah. So hot. It was a good time. I loved it. But then eventually, I just. Um, what sucks about ballroom is that you typically need a dance partner. Yeah. And where I lived at that time, a lot of the girls that were available to dance with were all on the younger side. And some of them were newer too. And some of these girls, when they're new and they like get any kind of like notoriety or any kind of like success and they think they know everything all of a sudden. And so they stop listening. Huh. <laughs> I know. So I just kind of just got burnt out. I was just sick of constantly putting all this time, effort and money into trying to make something work that wasn't going to work the way I wanted it to anymore. So is there like a whole like dance culture? Like is dance moms like indicative of like a real? Um, I'm sure it could be. I think I was too old for that, especially when I started getting to a level that I wanted to be and like winning competitions and winning nationals and stuff like that. Like I was like 16 and 17 and my mom was a single mom. So like she didn't have any kind of time, mm-hmm. for that level of bullshit and drama. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She yeah, wasn't yeah. sitting at home all day bored. Like yeah. <laughs> whose mom can I fucking fuck over today? Like yeah. she, she was like, I need to pay my bills. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have credit cards. I have a mortgage. Yeah. You know? So I didn't experience that at all really. And so how did dancing like help you as an adult performer? I think it, um, my mom loves to joke about this. She's like, I think dance really just made you just such a better whore. I'm like, thanks mom. (laughs) Thanks girl. Um, my mom and I are great. Love her. Yeah. I want to hear more about this relationship. She's wonderful. Um, (laughs) but, um, I would say it helped me, um, I guess kind of know my body a lot in a lot of different ways and know how I can move. And I think it also made it so like, I don't know, I think like, like in riding positions and shit, like when you do like want to have like those really like sexy mm-hmm. movements, like I think, you know, I would say dance and shit like that probably helped. I can definitely tell when someone has a dance background because mm-hmm. the body awareness is mm-hmm. very next level. You and they see me move. run through a bar. Oh. I will be on the other side in two seconds. <laughs> slithering through <laughs> so tell me about your mom because you said that you have a obviously she knows you work an adult yeah it seems like she's okay with it she was at the expos awards this year oh that's so cool she's so was mine oh my god yeah oh yeah you're, you're, right. Award on stage. Uh, yeah, you're right oh shit oh my god hey sorry <laughs> Oh my god! No, yes, that's exciting. I love that. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think I saw you there, did I? I was just there and just I was just chilling, just be, keeping it cool, <laughs> keeping it cool, keeping it chill, <laughs> trying not to drink. You know, this was the year where I didn't drink at any of the award shows. Good for you. How was that? It was fine. Was it? It was. Bar- I, it was boring, wasn't I re- it? I realized why. I'm like, oh, this is why I black out at these. <laughs> this is why. This is partly why. Nothing against the award shows. They're great. They're fun. They're always a good time. But it's it's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not your fault. It's me. I had a friend who went to the, I think, Expos. I think it was Quasar, actually, went yeah. to the Expos so, sober for the first time. And he's like, now I remember why I drink at these yeah. things. They're just long. They're long. It's you know? wrong. It's like, I'm not being a bitter bitch or anything. No one, no one come for me. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's just, time will fly, honey. Yeah, I <laughs> time know. Time will fly. You'll be like, oh. Why is it 4 a.m. all of a sudden? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, the only reason that it didn't drag for me was because mm-hmm. I got to go up on stage and present and accept an award twice, which has like never happened to me. But normally they they do drag for you me. You were busy. I was busy, but that like never happens for me. So, oh. but it was it was very exciting. So I love also, that. Thank you, Expos. So, um, did you have to like come out and tell? Okay, you know, what? let's actually let's back up a little bit. I know we're probably running around everywhere, and I'm so fucking sorry. No, it's okay. I mean, <laughs> technically, it's my job to like lead the interview Just in a certain the ship direction. Already, yeah, Holly. Exactly. God damn so, it! Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, so, how did you get into porn? Let's start there. Um, I was 18 years. Oh God, there's so much like weird shit with like my life and small weird little details. That, yeah, anyway, um, porn. Um, so it was 2018. Um, I was bored. I was in my early 20s. I was horny. I was sick of working in retail. Um, and I kind of like heard from some people that I knew um, about like kind of like porn and stuff. So I kind of like did some searching, some Google searches. And um, I found um, a couple of like, gay studios and I applied and one of them responded and they were like hey like you're not our look and whatever but like what was your look I think I was just too thin okay um which is fine it is what it is but um I say um a fucking lot I am so sorry to everyone who's listening (laughs) like an um hey yeah you're not Um, you're not a it's okay you're not alone I'm not here we are but anyway so they sent me an agent and Mm -hmm. so I got in contact with him signed up with him and then I think by February I had my first shoot. Okay. Yeah. So uh, tell us about your first scene. It was good. It, I don't remember it being uncomfortable. I remember it being pretty easy for me for the most part. I didn't really have that many problems. I was able to stay hard. I was bottoming for the most part. I think I bottomed every single time for that first shoot. Um, yeah. Pretty easy breezy. Yeah. Did you walk into that like with nerves or did you feel pretty I mean, it was I mean you're obviously like a performer right yeah. already yeah so you're not just somebody who's no. like never never done anything before yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 like i've done like you know america's got talent i've been on camera before i've done a lot of things what did you do for america's got talent i was dancing oh, okay. yeah she's you know she's just amazing um <laughs> but um yeah i don't remember at least so long ago forever ago um but i don't remember it being that dramatic or anything, but I do remember making my Twitter while um, staying there with all the other models and um, thinking like I would have never made a Twitter if I didn't do porn. Yeah, there's no reason. There's no reason for what now it's such a dumpster no. fire. No, right? It, it was already pretty bad, and then yeah. it just got worse. Now it's just awful. Who knew it could get worse? Yeah, I know. It could <laughs> always get worse, people. So you had a pretty unique start to your career because you had to take yeah. a year break after yeah. your first scene. Yes. So what happened there? Um. So I mean, like, I don't want to like name any names or like, get anyone in trouble okay. or like get myself in trouble. But, like, we like to not name names here. Yeah, we, we like, like to be, like, you know, keep it cute, keep it, chill, keep yeah. it cordial. Yeah. Somebody seems demure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Love Ariel. She's great. I know. She's so fun. Um, but um, I think, I mean, who knows where I got it from. But anyway, I test after that shoot, I tested for another um, scene. I ended up getting syphilis mm-hmm. from who knows from where in that two week span. But um, so, yeah, I had to take a whole year off. I don't know why. I don't I didn't. I was still new. So I wasn't sure how all the testing worked. And then also my agent at that time, like. I'm not sure he knew how everything worked 100% with that. So, like, we just had to wait for the tighter ratio to go all the way down to non-reactive, mm-hmm. which took, like, the year. Mm-hmm. So so tell us about, actually, how it does work. Because, actually, you know what? First, let's take a quick commercial break. Okay. And then um, when we come back, let's talk about the testing. Because that's something testing. that people are very interested in. Yeah. I think it's a little different from the... For the gay industry than it is for the straight. It might be. I'm not sure. I, well, we're gonna we're gonna compare notes and find out. Hell yeah! All right, uh, hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing: my Patreon page. 
With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better. Okay, so... Michael, yeah, so I want to talk about, like, the STD testing mm-hmm. in porn. First of all, a lot of people aren't even aware that we do that. Oh, yeah. And um, so can you talk about what it's like in the gay industry? Because I think it's a little bit different than it is for the straight industry. Um. So, and also it kind of depends on some of the studios. Because I remember when I first started, some studios were still doing condom. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, basically, you get booked for a scene, and typically... I think it's like typically like a week before and sometimes they'll even do like the week before and the night before. They'll um, test you. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's pretty stringent. So mm-hmm. it's a, so it's a seven day period. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it depends on the studio. Some are like two right. weeks, which I think is pretty standard. Week, two weeks is the minimum. Yeah. yeah. But then like some will be like, they'll do like a week and then like the day, the night before. Okay. Just to make sure that you're all, you're a good girl. Yeah. You're not using those tests to hoe around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and then you go on set and then you do your thing. And then, like, for your next studio shoot, depending on who they are and, like, what their requirements are, you'll probably get retested again. And you'll just, you know, basically just, like, a constant. I mean, I've been tested three times in a week, three, four times in a week before mm. for studios. So Yeah. So when you said that you got syphilis and then you had to wait a year for it to be non-reactive, mm-hmm. there's a way. And I didn't does- know. Because I was still new. I didn't know how any of it worked. And also, I didn't, my agent didn't really know, I don't think. So tell us how that works, because I actually don't know exactly Because my understanding is, and I found this out when I was a little bit more experienced, I think as long as you can prove, which I could have, prove that you were treated, then they'll let you back on. And, like, you can test for it. And, like, as long as you still have that letter, like, in the system or something or rather, yeah. they'll clear you. Right. And yeah. pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for people who don't know, pass is a industry-wide testing like database mm-hmm. where when people get tested their results go into this database so it's a way to keep everything secure and also keep it in one central system mm-hmm. so people can't fake tests because mm-hmm. what's happened in the past is that people would show up with paper tests before mm-hmm. and then they'd alter them mm-hmm. and then it would turn out that they had something and this is and then there'd be and this has happened a couple of times that's so wild yeah i mean just to save two hundred dollars yeah i mean the worst one was um Back in 1998, like the last big AIDS outbreak with um, oh shit, oh what's his name? It always comes back to AIDS, the worst. Yeah, well, <laughs> every back gay then, movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean back then too, like it was really scary because yeah. there was no treatment. Because um, weren't they like just kind of like discovering like the retrovirals and shit back mm-hmm. then too? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was definitely something that could still very easily kill Thank you. God, I wasn't gay back then. <laughs> I'd, have been, I'd have been gone in two seconds. <laughs> My I mean, I remember, well, I don't remember, my parents remember, they were doing movies back in, like, the early 80s. Did they perform as well, or did they just shoot? No, they just shot. Oh, that'd be awful as directors. Could you imagine, like, watching some of your favorite performers, like, get sick and... Well, awesome. yeah. So, so what happened was AIDS, the AIDS epidemic, like just kind of started right. while they were directing, and my parents were the only people who had their actors get tested. We had a blood truck really? parked in front of the house, my house. Like, like as a kid, I saw right. this. Yeah, and they would have people get tested, but yeah. back then, like, no one the test. But also, That's... like, the testing would oh, take weeks. You're right. 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 There wasn't yeah. any so. Like this by like rapid antigen, like exactly that didn't exist. Thirty second shit. <laughs> so it was kind of like it was a precaution they were taking, yeah. but also like there was this huge window where you could easily contract it in that window. Yeah. 
but they were like the only people doing it. Like That's nobody so else was crazy. doing it. And that was actually the reason that my mom stopped shooting movies. Yeah. Cause it just like made her so nervous. Oh. So she just quit shooting movies because of that. And, but she was still shooting pictures because yeah. back then you didn't do penetration. Yeah. For photos yeah. because the magazines, um, their distributions, like a lot of them, especially in Canada had different rules. Oh. So they just didn't shoot insertion insertion mm -hmm. didn't show up in pornographic magazines until the internet came along that makes sense because then they had to compete against yeah. so that's what changed it the internet you guys the internet it's wild it's that changed thing. so much it's so crazy should have been there <laughs> 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 so yeah so um no this so that's interesting and then also too because so now you know people can live with hiv and mm -hmm. have you know through taking certain medications like mm -hmm. prep and stuff like that they can have a such a low viral load they call mm -hmm. it right that it's like considered undetectable right and it's and not prep that's used for the preventing the aids from isn't that sense prep is to prevent you from contracting it so like if you were to have sex with someone who actually has the disease right. okay gotcha you are less like you won't get it Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Whereas, like the medication, the medications that they take if they already have the um have the disease um is just some I don't know what it is specifically, but I know it's not prep. I'm pretty sure. I'm I'm furrowing my eyebrows and being a bitch. I am so sorry. No, 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 no. Um, you know more about this than I do. So <laughs> I just don't want you thinking like because based on my facial expressions that I'm being an asshole. Um. Because I don't want to be an asshole. You're not an asshole. I'm just make You're sure. just kind of sassy. I know, well, that's but what I love about you. Th wait, thank God, because some people don't get it. No, and so I'm just trying to really no. just like just in case. I'm, like, I'm thank so God. easy. Okay. We already work together. Not, I already shot you with your penis out. There. I know how you are. But not everyone can be that easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just trying to cover my bases just in case. Um, but anyway, they take a different, either like one medication, I think there's like a cocktail medication that they take to make sure that the virus does not replicate anymore, which makes them undetectable. Right, right. Yeah. And so so when you have a, a low viral, a undetectable viral load, yeah. apparently it's essentially it impossible can't, to- It can't transmit. Transmit it, mm -hmm. right? But so is there a, because I know like in the straight industry, they're like so, still so like weird about that. And a lot of people- They're thinking are about it like it's the very, 80s. Yeah, like very- you can get off a toilet seat. Yeah, very like in a movie nervous theater. about it. But <laughs> from what I understand in the gay industry, if you, you can still work if you're HIV positive, you just, the other performers know that, they just accept know, yeah. it, and either they use condoms or you just have such a low viral load that it's- That and also like typically right? they ask you if you're on prep as well on the gay side as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. interesting. And like- most of the, especially like the gay guys, I'm sure some of the, I don't like talk about to the straight guys about that, because I've never had that I can remember, but like most gay guys that I know and that I hang out with, especially ones that do porn are on prep. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not doing porn, like I have plenty of friends who don't do porn who are gay and they are on prep. Like it's a pretty typical thing in gay culture. It's kind of like to make sure that women you, being on birth control. Effectively, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty freaking magical. I'm actually really grateful that I live in a time where we have things like that to make sure that yeah. we can all be, it's we, can, we can play, but we can also play safe yeah. and not have to put a Walmart bag on our penises. <laughs> How do you feel about condoms? Bitch. You're not I, a... they just don't feel nice. Yeah. I'm like, I'd rather just go without. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd rather go without than have your Walmart, your fucking, not Walmart, your, um, your McDonald's toy inside me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm good. I mean, it's amazing. Like we have all of these preventative measures mm -hmm. these days too. And also too, like generally people in, you know, viewers don't like watching uh, porn with condoms. Mm -hmm. I mean, statistically it's just yeah. been shown. Mm -hmm. I think it takes you out of the fantasy, mm -hmm. you know? But we also have to then like preface that by saying porn is not sex education and what you see in porn is not, you know, Ugh. what you should practice outside of yeah you know outside in your real world without consent or preventative measures or safety precautions and stuff like that you gotta love the things that we have to say in order to prevent a lawsuit i love that i know right all the things <laughs> i mean what do you think about like what would you say to people who watch porn and use that as a method of sex education oh the same thing yeah no, i don't want to get sued either i'll say whatever i need to <laughs> i don't care <laughs> prevent some idiot from being like well this, i watched his video and he did this so therefore i'm like oh, okay well 
you made your own deductions and your yeah. own judgments. Yeah. And I didn't tell you to do any of that. Yeah. So I also don't even see that like holding up in court. I mean, not that I'm a lawyer or anything, but like I'm just saying. I don't think anybody can It's sue. the litigation part that would probably be annoying. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody can. Uh, that would be a very hard case to have where somebody would like sue you directly because they tried to Personally. mimic what you did in a porn <laughs> film. But, you know, we see a lot of people talk about how kids are like learning about sex from porn, but maybe you talk to your kids. Yeah, maybe you like don't. Yeah, not I a mean, parent. Sex education but I'm just saying. is a good thing. That is not porn. But you know, how many times can we say that? So never enough. Um. So you are known as a bottom. Is that true? But you do both topping and bottoming. Yeah. Now, is there like a stigma around being a top or a bottom, or is there some kind of like, are there conversations about They're either inviting? Or? Are the girls okay? Um, I, I keep interrupting you. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I just love hearing the sound of my own voice. We love it too. That's why you're here. Oh, stop it, Holly. <laughs> you have all the nice things to say. Um, oh my God. Here I am talking over you, and I like completely forgot the question. <laughs> oh, tops and bottoms. Here we go. All right. Tops are shit. No, I'm kidding. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, I do know, I guess. I don't know, but. Do you know? You just don't want to say? I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess it's almost like men and women fighting, for lack of a better way to put it. Okay. So, like, sometimes I'll be with, like, other guys who are identified as more on the bottom side, and we'll all have a good time, and then, like, a top will come along, and we all want to murder them, because tops are typically stupid and annoying. Really? You're just, but maybe that's just me being a p power bottom. I don't know. Maybe that's why I view them that way. Cause I'm like, you're just a pole. You okay. are an object, you are something for my pleasure and then you can leave. Interesting. <laughs> so tell me what, tell the audience for those who may not know what a power okay. bottom is. Oh shit. All right, a power bottom is um, someone who can take really big dicks and who's also a little bit of a cunt, which is me. <laughs> Probably a little too much of an inflated sense of self. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you think that you have to say that word power bottom because people automatically associate being a bottom with being submissive? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like also like sometimes like people will use um, the word bottom as like a slur. Mm -hmm. Like you little bottom, you're so bot like, and I do it too sometimes, but just to my friends. Mm -hmm. But like, like you're just a bottom who can't host, like, you know, just stupid. Mm -hmm. shit like that but I think just like you know it's a masculinity femininity kind of thing I don't know is that something that you think about like mm -mm. how you define your masculinity is that I guess maybe sometimes I mean don't get me wrong I mean like I'm sure you've maybe seen some of my outfits I like to wear casually like at the Expos Awards I wore like a little coupless bustier with a suit and whatever like I like to play with that kind of shit but like I would consider myself still masculine. I would consider myself a guy. I like being a guy. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Everyone's different. Everyone. This is true. This <laughs> everyone is true. like everyone likes different things. I mean, like there are even like guys out there who are gay, and they might they're probably a little bit more on the femme side, or someone like like you wouldn't even know that they're mm -hmm. gay because they're so masked. Which is you know, everyone is who they are, and that's cool and that's fun. Wow, I, that coffee really chilled me out. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Just like everyone, just love everyone, people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that, I mean, I know that there's a lot of conversation and a lot of like internal battles with masculinity with straight guys. Yeah. Like it is definitely something Could that- Could you imagine being a straight guy? No, uh, well, honestly, no. For them. I know, uh, but that is not something that really comes up in, in gay culture. I'm sure it has its moments. I don't know, I just, I am one of those annoying people who like, I will get affected by some things, but then for the most part, like I just don't care and don't think about it. Again, I'm very not, quality. I'm very nonchalant. I just don't, I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to sit cause I'm gay and we don't know how to sit in chairs. So I move around a lot. Um, if there, if, if there were arms, I would be like this the whole time. <laughs> Just. I hope you're cutting to the wide on these, Ernie. Okay, good. Bring everyone a show. We need to see his amazing legs. 
sh- sh- just like, hey, <laughs> speaking, you're all welcome. <laughs> speaking of, you actually, um, so actually, let's talk about your body. Okay. Your amazing body. My amazing so body. So you said that when you first applied to be in porn that you were too skinny. And they kind of like, yeah. I mean, I would not say that looking at you now. Oh, no. So tell us about, like, how did you, how did you get so? So the first year, so it was 2018, no. It was, yeah, 2018. So I had that year off basically after my first shoot. Um, but I had, I already knew that I didn't have quite the look that I wanted for more of the mainstream, bigger studios. Because obviously if I was going to do porn. And side note, I mean, like, if you're going to do porn or adult content, at least for me, this was my kind of mentality. It's something that I was like, all right, this is something, if you want to make money, it's something you have to go all the way in or not at all. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know about OnlyFans and stuff like that. Because also coming from a dancing background, like I wanted to, like I like a studio. Mm-hmm. I like I like a group of people. You know what I mean? I don't. I didn't really do anything by myself. You didn't want to just shoot regard. on your cell phone in your bedroom. No, they, no, I didn't want that. Um, I wanted the full, like almost glamorous, yeah. kind of like idealized. I mean, you were a competitive dancer, so like you're used right. to like just working in this environment with lots of people, a bunch of an people, and, yeah, and yeah, like discipline. Mm-hmm. And, Art. It's like art. Yes. Taking photos. You're trying to just give your best that you can that day. Yes. Which I love all that stuff. So um, I took that year and I just started going to the gym and trying to figure out what to eat and all that stuff. And then after that year of just working out and just being consistent with that, I was able to work with some of the bigger studios the mm-hmm. following year. Okay. Yeah. And then do you still stick to a pretty like yeah. regimented gym routine? Yes. And then how, how often do you go? Um, if I'm being a really, really good boy, I'll go, I'll go like six days a week. And then is it hard? Do you feel like make yourself go or do you like it? Uh, I'd rather, even if I don't want to go, I would rather go because the mental lashing that I will give myself for not going will be far, far worse. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Unless it's like, I can talk myself down sometimes, Mm -hmm. but like for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially once you get to a point where you are in shape, once you get mm-hmm. that edge, the fear of losing that edge mm-hmm. is like is mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. And then you go yeah. more out of fear yep. than like anything. I am so scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Running up that stairmaster for my life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um I you you're definitely known for your ass. Um do you what's your anal cleanout routine? Oh my god. Um, well, I'm not, did you see that video of that one guy who no. said that he takes 10 emodiums? No. I died. I hope he was kidding. I think his name's Max Lord. I hope he was fucking kidding because my like, bitch. Do Could you, you take, imagine? Do you take any? I take emodium, yeah. Yeah. So I typically, so like if I'm just doing something where like maybe I'll need to be cleaned out for a couple hours. You're not going to play with this right now. You can, um, you can open Okay, it. great. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Holly. <laughs> Oh, you need to be hydrated to be a mess. Especially God damn it. talking about your anal routine. I need you hydrated for that. Thank you. Thank you. Holly. Um, so one second. Sorry. I also want to know what that liquid death bury it alive tastes like, because you're the first person to crack that open on this show. I am just so just humbled and blessed. And you, I just feel you, so special. Can you show that the, the what, what is Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Bury it alive. Much like, oh, never mind. I'm not going to make that joke. Just kidding. But it's delicious. <laughs> Is it good? It's pretty good. Okay. Oh, cool. shit. I keep knocking this thing around. What a mess. Here. One second. I'm just going to. Ooh. Ooh. Highly anticipated anal cleaning routine that you're all wanting. All right. Here we go. Chapter one. Um, <laughs> um, I do. So typically, if it's like maybe like, if I just need to be cleaned out for like an hour or two, mm-hmm. I can just clean out for maybe an hour and we'll be good mm-hmm. um but if i know like when say, you say clean out for an hour you mean like i'll be in the shower cleaning clean out for an hour mm-hmm. wow i basically give myself a full colonic but like i just want to make sure yeah because i am one of those people who prides themselves on not having accidents have you never had an accident on set i mean who hasn't every once in a while but like i keep them few and far in between because mm-hmm. i like to just be that golden boy yeah of course it comes back to my competitiveness discipline dance yes you guys yes um so so if it's like something that where i don't need to be cleaned out for very long then i'll just do like an hour no modium no nothing Mm -hmm. i'll be good to go um but if it's like a studio thing so like you know like studio like 
it's hours before yeah. you even start filming anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will take maybe three or four ammonium. Mm -hmm. And also what I've noticed, with, at least with my body, I don't know about everyone else, but like if I want a quick clean out too, and if I know that I need to just be clean most of the day, I will um, take those four ammonium and then just kind of let it sit for a while. And then eventually I'll go in the shower and clean out and like, it's that modium's hat. Once the modium has had time to work, like my cleaning out maybe be like 30 minutes. Okay. And then do you eat throughout the day? If I'm taking a modium, I definitely will eat. Okay. Because that's the beauty of the modium because then like nothing's going to come out. Right. At least right. for me, like till the next day. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to ask how long. Pass around party there. bottom at that point. <laughs> <laughs> May as well. When in Rome. <laughs> So uh, I, I actually want to go back to asking about um, the industry. Yeah. Now there is, there's a lot of like straight guys being turned gay sites. And I know that's like, it's a big fetish. They're turned gay. Is it true? Or do you, have you ever worked with a guy who swears up and down that he's straight? That's my favorite. And <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> look, keep going. Look, look, look at that twinkle in your eyes. What? Um, I don't fetishize it. I don't, I'm not into it. Yeah, so tell me, like, is that true? Because I... Some people do, but I feel like the people who... I feel like... I feel. <laughs> but it's also based on, like, I've talked to some people. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel, from what I have seen and witnessed and heard, that it seems to be mostly the older generation of gays who still fetishize turning a guy. Yeah. Or tricking a straight guy yeah, or shit like that, which is fine. I mean, whatever, teach their own, it is what it is. Um, but for me personally, I mean, call me old fashioned. I want someone to fuck me because they want to fuck me. Not because you trick me I don't want to, I don't want to, because that, that's sexual assault basically mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. And that's not my vibe. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I want you to worship me like the queen that I am. Yeah. Um, so. No, but what about like actual straight guys like, are there straight guys that are doing gay for pay? Yes. And are they? Okay, so I'm not a man, so I don't know how this works. Because okay. I know, like, how so many straight men Try will mix. swear up and down oh. that they would never be with a man under uh, any circumstances. Yeah. They'd never thought about it. Give them whatever. a couple beers. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> no, like, I'm curious. Like, are there straight guys who do gay? And do you think maybe every straight guy is maybe a little bit gay? <sighs> Here's my thing about the straight men. Love them to death. They're great. A lot of them are good, really good performers. Um, but I don't know. For me, like, I don't really think about it that much. Mm. And if I do, or if I, like, am, like, I'll just talk about my, just, you know, talk shit with my friends and just, you know, have a moment. But, like, what whatever it is that people could, like, think that they might be going through or, like, are they really straight? Like, I don't think about that because it's honestly none of my business. Mm -hmm. I'm like looking at the camera, it's none of my business. <laughs> Talking, it's like a state of the union. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> Talking you, to the people of America, sorry. <laughs> so you've met like straight guys on the yeah. on sets and you're just like whatever about what their actual I don't care. Is. You're not trying to like dive into their no. psyche. No, whatever, yeah, whatever they're doing with their, with their time is their business. Hmm. I, like not to be super cut and dry and bitchy or anything, which is, you know, totally me, but, um, excuse me. Excuse me, sorry. Try not to burp in the camera or the thing, the microphone. But um, yeah, I'm just here, I'm just here to get a paycheck, man. <laughs> I'm here to get in and not be on set for eight to ten hours. Okay. Yeah, amen to that. And amen I'll do it. To that. But if we can cut it down by an hour or two, that'd be fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so um. I mean, so you don't really have an opinion one way or the other about like gay for bay. I mean, I could, but I'm not gonna say that on camera. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Afterwards, I have a feeling I know what it is. I'm just well. Do you? Uh, no, actually, I have no idea. I'm just trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Oh shit! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you out like that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I called myself out. Um, any like crazy onset stories? Oh god, let's think. I'm like I told you at the beginning. I'm very like I you just, don't you let I things forget. go. Yeah. I let things go so quick. I don't care. <laughs> That's great. Um, let me think. Fuck. Well, because that makes interviews fucking annoying. Yeah. I need to hold grudges better. Yeah. That should be my 2024. Just just have your brother goal. hold them for you. Maybe he can make a list for you. You're right. And then like he gives you a list. But I, you know, I will say like it's funny. Maybe I should just write them down. Because the I should that's my, true. You could also make my own list. You could also just do it yourself. I could. You just put it in your phone. Like, oh, bad day on set today. I got to put this in my phone. Save it for my next interview. 
God damn it. Great I ideas what... with Holly Randall. <laughs> I know what you mean though, because like people will do that to me a lot. They'll say any crazy on set stories, and then like, like oh. when you put me on the spot, I can't think of it. Which is what ironic that I just asked you that question. It's okay. the one question that I hate getting. You're over here victimizing me the way you don't like to be victimized. That's okay. <laughs> Sometimes I can pull it's, something it's... good out of people. <laughs> Fair. Let me second. Let me think. Let me think. Fuck. It's okay because be like as because like I said for me and then somebody will trigger mm -hmm. my memory and I'll be like oh my god there was this one time. what make what makes what makes it crazy like what's crazy I don't know I mean oh god like I've Pop had showing up oh shit somebody like me. barfing all over you god okay I well I could have I could have a couple maybe um typically I don't know so like I have had one where oh my god we were there. Oh my God. It typically, most of the bad times I've had on set are s centered around boners mm -hmm. and someone not being able to get a boner. Yeah. I and mean, it's or be like tough because you were laying on two men to get boners. I generally lay on just one. Yeah. And typically, I don't know, I've seen straight porn. I, I've, I've, I've been known to jerk off to some straight porn every once in a while because I like a man who looks like they're having fun. So mm -hmm. at least they look like they're having fun. Um, but in gay porn, I don't know. I'm sure even with me, I don't always register like I'm having fun, but yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. So my like, God damn it. God bless everyone who subscribes. Um, I don't remember where we're going with this. I'm so sorry. I just rant and rave and ramble. Well, how about this? Do you ever oh, show stories about bad yeah. stories? Upset? Like basically, yeah, all my bad stories basically sent around dicks not getting hard or taking too long to come. Mm hmm. Like, I remember once I waited two hours for some guy to, like, come. And I was, like, texting the fucking um, director while we were both on set so so that we wouldn't, like, talk in front of him. Mm -hmm. Because nothing makes a guy not come more than you guys talking about how he can't come in Yeah, front of I him. know, but then he's he be, like, you texting. He knows what you're texting No, he does. About. That he's you're busy on his phone looking at porn. You know, yeah, he knows you're not, like, texting a grocery list. Well, to, like, maybe he should have came prepared. <laughs> two hours. I text, text the director. I mean, I'm like, girl. I need to fucking end this shit because I had a, this was during the pandemic. This was 2020, oh. and I was living in Florida at the time, so I flew over to LA and stayed in LA for a month yeah. to do to get some studio work in. And so right after that that shit show, I had to drive to Vegas to go shoot. Yeah. So I was like, we need to fucking sh speed this shit up, bitch. So or cut it or fake it. Did he end up coming? No, we ended up faking it. I mean, that's the thing. Like, okay, so if he wanted if, to give him a chance, which I understand, but at the same time, but you got to call it after a certain girl. period of time. Like, I've talked to a lot of guys who said, like, if they can't get a boner, they call it after twenty minutes. Twenty minutes is the cap. Do yeah. you feel like that's fair? Like, a if you boner, can't come in though, twenty minutes, oh come, oh yeah, girl, if you can't come in twenty minutes, yeah, because like I've had moments where it felt like it took me forever. It was like five minutes, but when like you know that everyone's waiting on your cum shot, it feels like an eternity. Eternity. Yes, it feels like an eternity too. <laughs> even when you're behind the camera, because oh. it's like it's quiet and it's right. weird too. It's like that situation where people don't know if they should chat casually, so mm -hmm. it's not like dead silent, or if that's oh. going to distract the performer. And it, everyone's different. Yeah, exactly. I, I have because I, I've had my moments on sets where I'm like, feel free just to talk. It's fine. And then I've also had other moments where I'm like. Everyone just needs to shut the fuck up. Yeah. So I think it just depends on the day, too, for some people. Yeah. At least for me. And then it's also awkward, too, if you ask the performer in that moment whether or not they want it quiet or loud. Because then you're once you're again. You're trying to be delicate. Yeah. And you're once again putting the pressure of, like, people's behavior, how to react to their non-boner. Yeah. It's it's just a, it's a delicate dance. Yeah. It's so awkward. Centered around a man's penis. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. It is, like, it is hard not. Actually, it's not hard. I know. But you know what I mean? Or it's just hard and like there's no sensation because so much Trimax and just, you know, it's just a dead, dead hard dick. <laughs> dead hard dead dick. Hard dick. <laughs> How did you, okay, so where was this guy supposed to come? Like on your face and your butt? He like was on the bottom. Oh. Yeah. So. I think I had already came if I'm not mistaken. Wait, okay. No, I think actually I was waiting to come. I think I was waiting to come actually. Oh, so, so you had we're to hold your own I come hold for mine. him. Yep. But I'm a fucking professional. And I can do my job. So, Just saying. <laughs> so when the bottom is supposed to come, where are they supposed to come? Because they're not Just supposed like to come on themselves, on the top, right? I think they could. They, Just depends on the okay. position. So, like for instance, like I've done writing, th writing like positions, like me bottoming, like I'll just come on the top, mm -hmm. or 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 whatever. You just come, come on yourself, or come on the top. Have you ever like 
had to be a stunt cock and like come for somebody else? No. Because there's two guys there. So I feel like if you just zoomed in, I mean, but unless it was. I'm pretty white. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, depending I'm on the I'm really color, white, I'm girl. <laughs> Even like the other white guys that I'll film with are still like eight shades darker than me. Like I'm Magnolia and they're all honey beige. Like <laughs> I'm like Daph no, like what's a white what's another white flower? I'm a white whatever, you know what I mean? I'm lotus. flower. I'm lotus. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh my god. White with a little bit of pink in it. <laughs> so if one was not familiar with your work, where could they go and um, get what you think are some of your best scenes? Um, subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> and what is that? Um, it is um, it's just Michael Boston, all spelt normal. Okay. No, no three S's like my uh, social media. Yes. Just the one S. Yes. Well, um, since we're going to actually, before we wrap up this episode, okay, I do have a question for you okay. from one of my Patreon members. Okay. Um, and then after that, we will throw out all of your social media handles to our guests so they can look you up and find your OnlyFans and yes. find your Come professional find professional penis and your white legs and your perfect butt. Your professional penis. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a funny, like, little, I don't know, like a little name somewhere. Like, the, pro the professional penis. Well, it could be, like, a whole, like, office series. Be cute. Yeah. Like a top hat on the dick. Yeah. Little, do you know, tucks. do you know the guy, um, Things My Dick Does? That sounds great. What is that? So, it's, it started off as a Tumblr account, but Tumblr's, like, gone now. So, I don't know. Poor Tumblr. Miss you rest where, in peace. Where? <laughs> where? You, I think I follow him on Instagram still or Twitter. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so, yeah, he takes pictures of his penis and he draws like, like makes it a stick figure and he puts like hats on it. Yes, he, and he like has it like, it like goes to sleep or like sometimes if it drinks too much, he like, he'll do, he'll set up stuff where like he'll come on his stomach and then he'll position his penis so it looks like the, it's it hung up. over and it like threw up. It's like pretty cute. So I live. Yeah, it's pretty cute. You That's should go great. check it out. <laughs> Things my dick does. It's just like any, yeah. And he dresses his dick up and it's, a, it's adorable. Okay, so question for you okay. um, is from Dave, and he says this is a hypothetical question. Okay, Dave. If uh, one came, if they came out with a pill that let people grow muscles like you have oh, so without having to work out, would you be resentful that people would look the same as you without having to put in the effort? Oh fuck no, bitch! I would jump on those pills too. <laughs> <laughs> fuck no, <laughs> hell yeah! I would do the same shit. <laughs> and so, like, and no more gym time. No, fuck that. No, if I don't have to do that, no, screw that. <laughs> Who needs who needs dopamine? Am I right? I mean, I you know I prefer I work out a lot of it for mental because it who like needs endorphins. I, I mean, burn them, <laughs> throw them in the trash, Holly. Come on, let that chick take go. the pill. <laughs> take the pill, everybody. Take the pill, guys. Take your prep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure to see you Thank you again. for having me. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I feel like I rambled and ranted and was crazy. I'm so sorry. But you were so adorable. Thank God. So. I like can fall on my adorableness. Yeah. Thank God you're pretty. Thank God. <laughs> that Randy. Rand, Randy. What the fuck was I about to say? Randy Randall over here. <laughs> Miss Randy Randall. Miss Holly Randall. See, what I love about gay men is that, like, I can appreciate their beauty and I can oh. say things like that to them and they don't, they aren't going to try to fuck me, which oh. I love. Really? You just compliment a straight guy and they just want to fuck you? Straight men, like, are easy. Are they the take easiest little whores. the wrong way. So quickly. Like, a lot of times if you're, like, cute, you, like, flirt with them and it just, like, I flirt with everybody in a Damn. very, I'm just like that. And then guys will be like, oh, she wants to fuck me. It's like, no. Okay. Really. Don't. We need to have a class or uh, anyway. Can you teach teach straight men not how to take like shit seriously? <laughs> I don't think I'm the one to deliver that message. <laughs> I'm just going to leave them alone and try not to speak anymore on the subject publicly. <laughs> it's going to be a nice, cute, sweet boy. And shut up. So where can one find a nice, cute, sweet boy online? Um, you can find me on it's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, or, or, or X, whatever you want to call it. Fuck it, it's Twitter, bitch. Um, it's all Michael Boston, and then Boston has three S's in it. Perfect. Yeah. And then you can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter or X. 
Um, I'm still on TikTok for some reason. They haven't banned me yet, which is a <laughs> shock. Um, <laughs> Masha's looking at me like, because of me. Thank you, Masha keeps my socials clean. Hell yeah. Um, it's Holly Randall 78, right? Is that what it is? Okay, yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, Holly Randall 78. And of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these interviews live, except for this one, because our Wi-Fi wasn't working today, um, but it'll be up there later. Go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And I will see you next week. <laughs>